Okay, I'm going to take you through our perio charting module on Practica. So to get there, we'll click on the appointment and go to the patient file and go to periodontal charting here. Now for this particular patient, this is saying that they already have an existing exam. I can choose to look at this exam if I want by clicking on this date with the provider. Otherwise, I can start a new exam from the top right. We're going to start a new exam. I have the option to copy, copy data from the previous exam if I want to. Otherwise, I can just start a completely blank chart, which I'm going to do from here. So before we start charting, we have a few view options that we can change here. So we can drag our clinical notes and images up from the bottom of the screen by clicking this blue header, dragging it up. If I want to keep it here every time for the future under my user only, I can then press save view options. I'm just going to move this back down because I don't like seeing that. Um, now on the right hand side, we have the option we can change the way the chart moves. Um, most of the time it's in this movement. So that's the default setting. We can show um, just either the maxilla or the mandible, or we can show both. As a default, it will be set on both. Chart display options. So this is referring to chart some numbers in the pocket depth here for the one seven. So this is on bars at the moment. We're getting the bars appear on the actual teeth root surfaces. I can change that to curves or I can change it to labels. I don't recommend having all three of these options ticked because the more data the chart has to load, the slower your period chart's going to be. So just have your one preference turned on. So if it's curves, you can tick off, untick the others and just leave curves ticked. Or if it's bars, just tick bars and untick the others. Now, entry switch options here. Auto means that we're just going to enter in a single digit and it will automatically put you to the next box. So enter a six here and it's automatically going to put me onto the next box. If I turn it on to manual, because perhaps maybe I have a double digit um, number such as 10 or maybe 11, I will need to turn it on to manual. So manual with tabs. So that means that I can manually type in my number and it can be a double digit in this one. So I can type 11. Now to get it to go to the next box, I need to press tab. So if it's just a once off that there's a two um, that has a pocket depth larger than just one digit. So if it's higher than nine, I can just turn it onto manual, type in my number and then flick it back to auto and then it will go to automatic. So charting along here for your pocket depth in the green area. So if I go through and chart all of my numbers, Now I have the option in here to mark each individual tooth as a prognosis. So I can mark it as a questionable prognosis if the um, tooth has you know, extremely high pocket depth or um, is quite mobile. I can go through and mark each individual one here. You don't have to do this, but this is an option if you want to. Now, before you start your chart as well, you have the option to mark teeth as missing or you can change their tooth type. Has to be before you start the chart though. So if I want to change the tooth type or mark a tooth as missing or an implant, I can click on the actual tooth number itself, not the box, the tooth number, and I can change it from here. So if it's a primary tooth, I can change it to primary, or if it's missing, I can change it to missing. If I mark it as missing or implant, whatever it is, in here, it will reflect in the restorative chart. And vice versa, anything that I've marked in the restorative chart, if I've marked missing teeth or implants, it will be reflected in this chart. 
I must mark it before I begin the chart though. 